<laughs> right, as you can see, that's my email. You want anything like the references or me to send you the presentation, just shout. Right. Okay, here is Bennett and Osgood's, I don't care if I've got it wrong, ramp method, which we've adapted, Graham Young adapted and zoomed down. There's me lying there, looking lovely, and our very first ever enabled participant going down there. Right, have I got this right? Yes. What I'll cover, oh, by doing, I forgot to say, by you doing that, you've broken ice with somebody you don't know. Maybe next time you'll smile at them. Maybe next time you'll say hello. Maybe next time you might even talk to them. Horrors! Ah! But the fact is, it's broken. That's what positive change in archaeology can do. I'm going to cover past societies um, uh, about osteoarthritis in the medieval times. I mean, obviously, me and Paul before that. Ha! Um, archaeologists and our archaeology groups as advocates of positive change our local enabled archaeology system and also being in not out and our new trials which are going to prototype for next year yay right EF inclusion methods excavation week which you can see from the photo they were fabulous at Bamba research project um positive relationships issues were ironed out in five seconds attitude was fabulous mind you there were quite a few enabled but i'm not saying who there as well and, and that's fabulous too because we've got some new abilities and we're in the community and public and out and in I'll cover all that in the future but because I thought the presentation was 20 minutes I'm going to have to zoom like an aeroplane okay as you can see here um, before I go on with the Neanderthal Shanandar one um, recently very recently there's been two new um, discoveries actually in that cave um, ask me about it later, I know hardly anything, but more proof. Right, there, there was one person who was really harshly cited, deaf, mobility issues, you know, um, I can't even say that word, and lived to an old age in Paleolithic of around 40 to 50 years. Oh, they couldn't hunt, they couldn't do anything, so what's the point in them? There was a five year old Neanderthal with severe brain damage who was cared for by the community, they all cared for them. In medieval times, if you look at uh, the farm picture, um, there was a left foot prosthesis and who had mobility issues and all these different diseases, and the communities brought it in. And going back to Shandar one at the beginning, they also supported. And do you know why the arguments? Let me just quickly flash. Yeah, okay, let's go back. Um, and do you know why? It's been argued very recently, and I believe it that without them, without them caring, because there were many medical different issues and mental health and so on then, um, it actually helped them to evolve and to stay developing and evolving throughout many more years and being extinct. I agree. Right, this is a definition of osteoarthritis. This medieval time, there was, you know, an adult male, he had no left foot, knees and shoulders had massive arthritis in it's really quite a painful condition eh? and um, he had a possible crutch and he definitely had mobility issues and it was a common condition then and a common condition now and yet again in medieval times they cared for the person and they weren't always and um, some were don't get me wrong because I've been corrected before but in medieval times people actually did say i'm a turner i'm a blacksmith whatever people didn't ask so much about disability unless it was on the religious side which in other countries in the world you know yes there was persecution if you like of that um, my participant has has it in her knees and because of she excavated over many years um or she's now an academic but she was aided by others to be able to stay there but being on dig all of us at some point you know tradition is let's kneel down let's bend over whatever but the fact is that we don't need to but that has destroyed quite a few people so going on to fraser whose thesis was in 2008 who i'll have the honor of writing with next year my, my goodness anyway she um 
she examined archaeology, she became disabled in the job. How, how can we change this? How can we make it positive? By planning, for instance, keeping in mind using universal design in planning for excavations, whether community, whether commercial, because as Phillips and Gilchrist have said many times, it costs nothing, it might take five, ten minutes extra. So what? It's called being together and unified. Right, there are so many groups I could go on forever. Rux McQueen, 2014, um, about dyslexia. Cross, the very first person ever to mention that we actually exist. Disabled archaeologist, really go here, hello! Um, and then there was Phillips and Gilchrist, who was asked by the government et al, sorry, to produce guidelines, which they did, and they said it's just common sense. They're changing all these people, Fraser, they're all changing society, they're all saying what needs to be said. And what's so beautiful, for instance, Rox McQueen is an enabled archaeologist. He says that. You know, we are starting to voice, but only really in the last five, eight years, something like that. We're partnering ourselves with the Bamba Research Project is has been and will carry on to be uh, so fabulously inclusive. Um, Thames Discovery Programme, Breaking Ground Heritage over here, who will be talking later, Operation Nightingale, and there are many more. The attitudes not only have changed, but people are voicing, just like Dickie and Richard, just like we do, that our voice be heard, because in the past we were shunned and treated like utter, and now we're not. Enabled archaeologist Emily Timothy Campbell. Um, she go an underwater specialist who goes to mild and severely disabled enabled participants in the community has done in the past her work. For instance, a person in an iron lung actually in the water and doing archaeology. Everything is feasible, and all these people are changing the world. As you can see, TDP fabulous people can't even. I don't know post technology there that was me with them and bamba this year with our marvelous one participant next year there's going to be a lot more aren't there yes okay in the neighborhood archaeology foundation finally finally we've had many issues but we will be a cio next year and i'm not going to say which part because i've always got it wrong our local regional national and international label archaeology system which will be paid eventually with funds and so on um, which I created in 2015, will be to go out to people, not be in, go out to the community, to places where people are comfortable and happy, and talk about archaeology, talk about the words, and then if they're interested, they, we can meet them there or come to us. It's great that we advertise, it's great that we say, come and join our community dig. That does nothing, especially somebody who has disabilities. You need to bring them in just like Hall Torf with the lived experience. You go to where people are, the community, and that's how we're going to change them, one by one, group by group, um, and their comfort zone, not ours. That to me is positive action and inclusion. Our satellite medical archaeology team this year, we, we didn't even have to do much, but literally just the four of us doing it over Skype, in the end we the participant wanted to do it by email only, which is great. It was all sorted, the approaches were sorted out for that person, their wishes first, and it's changed loads. We've got two new types of trial, trial, one for those without any limbs that are going prototyping, and one for those, for instance, with cerebral palsy or severe shaking, weak wrists, hands, can't use, you know, they've got frozen stumps and so on, immobility, which in the year so far, we've only had the first year this year, has been 95 to 100% successful, only one of our actual um, inclusion methods, and it did fail. As you can see, it's positive archaeological future, cultural change that connects us all in word and deed, integrity and principle. Now, a one short story from the summer, a deaf child came up and I was watching our participant, because that's what I'm there to observe, and she looked at them and we'd gone through, you know, the social pressures, how, how to alleviate that if you need to. 
And I had to go away and cry because you know what our participant did? She actually talked to the child and I didn't see the whole thing. That's not true. I was told about it, forgive me. Um, and also the child was told that they could join in at the community outreach parts. And when I heard that, I had not heard of anybody doing that before. Yes, of course you can join in. You can be part of it. And the actual change in attitude is staggering. And also the staff, students and archaeologists, we were all united this year. There was no gaps, no otherness, not them over there, as Cross said in 95. There was positive eagerness, support, aid, most of all, attitudinal welcome and respect. Inclusion methods ideas were actually given to us from the students. Um, one in particular who I'm keeping the name of forever. As you can see, this is our participant here actually doing the finds with our new um, methods for drawing and recording and plotting. In the middle is our participant who was able to 90 odd to 100%. She'd only worked for minutes in a trench once and she has both invisible and visible, and she was able to elongate that and even beg, to, not beg, but ask to stay as long as she could, and it was hours, 10 minutes. And in the far, the far one, you can see our Deborah Riches, who has always been a marvellous lecturer and person at colleges all over the place. She was denied on other digs to do any trench work at all. And a week before we got there, she walked into the trench on her crutch. And not just because of the slope, which is all down to uh, those two over there, but because she was allowed by Bamba Research. Allowed, we have life choices, but it's such a lovely change to see. Oh, is that as far as I've got? Yeah. Um, all these are, we're, we're starting to show you, by practically showing UK archaeology how valuable we disabled enabled archaeologists and participants are, as you know, there's less than 5% of us employed. And I'm researching at the moment the museum sector less than 1%. And I can't say that's, that's all approximate because we'll never be able to, it's always going to be problematic with disabilities. But um, yeah, we next year will be the first EAF as soon as we get some sponsorship funding, um, hopefully. Um, it's all in the negotiations at the moment will be the first time that paid, disabled, enabled archaeologists will be showing our worth and our credit and what we can do. People get first, people get PhDs. I don't think I have to argue that. It's fact. And they have fabulous methods. Our group, especially as around 2,000 of us over the world are in five, six countries now, will be in eight. All of these groups that I've mentioned, all the people I've mentioned, it's all supportive groups that value and we respect them for their practical help and advice and sharing their experiences. In fact, like BAMBA, like Breaking Ground Heritage, tense discovery programme and we're in the negotiations for our final year for our long-term income. All right, my long-term income idea where every community group, I will share the idea once I've proven or disproven it. Even then, even if I look at it and I'm wrong. But so far it looks nice. I can't say that. I don't know anything. I can only prove it from the one participant this year, which is nothing. I know that. That's why I'm trying to build up. And I will be asking the other enabled archaeology groups in the world, hello, gorgeous people, wherever you are, Australian museum, who are looking in, um, I will be asking you to try out the methods too. Um, so there are many that positively change our culture. And our culture is gradually changing from the medical model of there, 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 it's your fault you've got a disability too. The social model, which is starting to be accepted where it's society's fault that somebody, you know, hasn't got the access they need. Um, yeah, they're changing our culture. Cross, Phillips, Gilchrist et al, Rox McQueen and many more. And also, what I want to say, um, which I obviously hadn't included in here, is what I've seen this year has blown me away. The hope enabled archaeologists now have. The hope. They are standing up and fighting. Next year you will hear of things in court. You will hear about the abuse. But the fact is that they've stood up. That they are now saying, this is what we want. 
and they're challenging the very culture of archaeology and that's what every single advocate has done read disability and every single one of us volunteers through to the highest phd and lords and whatever ladies are challenging the culture because that's what's behind the suicides that's what's behind the nervous breakdowns and so on and the positive thing is 16 people now i can guarantee 16 people have not committed suicide because we are here our very archaeological culture is starting to and will be changed to one of equality equity inclusion for all of us who are disabled but also one thing people keep getting wrong eaf isn't just for disabilities it's also for others too to come in and understand and get to know because so many many the biggest barrier for us within archaeology is that people are unfamiliar with us with anybody with a disability and they see somebody without arms and legs and look at no arms and legs which is natural to do but don't forget his name's Fred so it is changing and it will be changed you think that it's an ideal but it will be changed through one-to-one -one and group work going into the community and coming back and I'm not just talking community I'm talking commercial I'm talking everything we will be showing our worth and we will employ as many as we can and yes we will also be employing you know others too I don't mean your others <laughs> but we'll all be together our new mixed dicks will also do that too where we will be teaching staff um, who have no idea and familiar with disabilities too work alongside enabled archaeologists and participants volunteers and they will go back out into the community with our director of excavations if you want to know more about anything i've said there are leaflets at the end of the thingamajig um i'm yeah um and that's our new ones that kindly three marvelous people um cat Reese, or catherine and cat i don't know how to say me sorry uh, other person have funded and they'll be at the back um yes so i don't know am i short oh yes and this final one is of our deborah richards again in the trench and she's been teaching you know and when i got there a week later i was crying i'll tell you the opposition is very very fierce at the moment very fierce 10 percent 90 percent of you are marvelous fantastic but many many are not aware of us either but we have got a voice now. We're starting to get a voice. There's 2,000 of us over the world, around 1,000 of us in this country. I thought it was 600 odd, no. And there are some, people still don't believe this, wheelchair users who are freelance diggers and they are actually doing it. Um, let me just check what's next because I always forget things. And I've got loads of references if you want them. Okay, cheers. The end.